At least a quarter of a million species of flowering plants have been discovered and named so far. And within this bewildering diversity, flowers come in all shapes, colors, and sizes. But what are the very biggest flowers on Earth? This is the talipot palm, Corypha umbraculifera. This palm produces the largest flowerscape in the world, which can grow up to eight meters long and have literally millions of tiny flowers along its length. While this is impressive, the flowers are very small, so I think we can do better in our search for the world's largest flowers. There are many ways to classify blooms. Some are single flowers that grow alone, while others consist of lots of small flowers that together make up a unified floral structure. In terms of single flowers, the biggest in the world belong to the parasitic plants called Rafflesia that grow in the rainforests of Asia. I'm in West Sumatra, Indonesia, on the search for giant Rafflesia blooms of the forest. These amazing flowers were discovered 200 years ago, but they flower so infrequently that they're still relatively little known. For the last week, I've been sending guides and porters in all directions through the jungle to try and look for developing flowers and to talk to villagers to see if there's any blooms open. And so far, every single one has come back negative. However, late last night, one contact came back and said there's a flower open in this forest. And it's not just any Rafflesia, it's the biggest of all, Rafflesia anoldii, the largest member of the genus and arguably the biggest flower on earth. And it's in bloom just over here. I have dreamt of seeing this giant flower in the wild for years. But Rafflesia blooms are rare and so not easy to find. Wow, look at this. This is Rafflesia anoldii, the biggest single flower on earth. And let's measure it. It's about, it's about 65, 70 centimeters across. They can get a little bigger. They're often known to be about 80 to 85 centimeters. And some reports suggest even over a meter in diameter. But still, it's an amazing flower. And it's meant to resemble a dead corpse. But it has a rather disgusting secret. Rafflesia flowers mimic the rotting bodies of dead animals. You can see it consists of five petals that are bright orange and warty. This is meant to resemble carrion. And inside it's got hairs like a dead corpse of some animal. And if I smell it, it's got a strong smell of rotting meat. It's quite incredible. This plant has an amazing life cycle. It's actually a parasite. It has no leaves. It exists as a network of fibrous tissues within a vine called the tetrastigma vine. And once in a while, buds develop. The buds develop over about nine months to a year and then suddenly burst open, forming this incredible bloom. But the bloom itself lasts for only about six to seven days, then it dies and rots. In exactly the same forests of Sumatra, there grows another giant flower, which is even harder to see than Rafflesia. This plant is called Amorphophallus titanum, or the Titan arum lily. The enormous flowers of this species are bigger than those of Rafflesia, but it's not a single flower. Rather, it's made up of lots of little blooms. Like Rafflesia, the giant flowers of the Titan Arum also only last a few days, then they wither and die. So they're very difficult to see in the wild. A friend in Sumatra let me know that this giant flower bud was about to open. So I jumped on a plane and flew out to Sumatra as quickly as I could. Just like Rafflesia, the Titan Arum also uses smell as a mechanism to attract pollinators. That these giant flowers evolved side by side is testimony to the power of scent as an attractant. For in these dense rainforests, 
visual signals like petals are not very effective, whereas scent can travel vast distances, wafted on even the faintest jungle breezes. I can honestly say I have waited my whole life to see this giant flower in bloom in the wild, and I can hardly contain myself with excitement searching for it. And there, there it is, the Titan Arum Lily. And it absolutely stinks. I can already smell it from here. Let's go check it out. Wow, just look at the size of this thing. This is bigger than I ever imagined. It took me a day or two to fly into Sumatra to reach this flower, and sadly, I think it was a little past its best. The petals had already started to age and curve inwards, but it was still very impressive. The biggest one of these ever recorded stood 3.73 meters tall. This specimen isn't quite that big, but let's find out how big it is. It's so big I can't even reach the top of it. As an approximation, about three meters tall. This flower has a really complicated pollination mechanism, and that partly explains the gigantic size of this structure. Inside, there are two bands of male and female flowers. The female flowers open and mature first and become receptive to pollen. Then they wither and die, and then and only then, the male flowers, the florets, release their pollen. Because the female ones have already withered and are no longer receptive, the flower can't pollinate itself. But this gigantic structure has the solution to that problem. This bit here in the middle is called the spadix, and it works just like a giant chimney. It releases scent, and if you smell it closely, oh, it absolutely stinks, just like rotting meat or rotting fish, and it's actually known locally here in Indonesia as the corpse flower. This chimney heats up on its own. It actually releases heat and removes the scent into the air and helps spread it up just like a chimney. And that's extremely important because the nearest open flower like this might be kilometers away. So it's crucial for the flower to get its scent far and wide to attract pollinators. Whilst observing this giant flower, I could see this scent attraction mechanism working well. Lots and lots of flies were buzzing around the flower. They may have been attracted and flown from kilometers away from the nearest bloom to enable cross-pollination. The leaves of the Titan Arum are produced on just as an impressive scale as the flowers. Each leaf can be the size of a small tree and often last for a year or more slowly filtering energy from sunlight and storing it in the enormous underground tuber. A single Titan Aaron plant may wait several years before it has stored up enough energy to produce another gigantic bloom. Almost unbelievably, these diverse rainforests on the island of Sumatra are home to a third, much less well-known giant flower called Amorphophallus gigas. A friend called Brad Wilson was lucky enough to see one of these giant flowers in the wild. The blooms can be as tall as a lamppost, but are even rarer than Rafflesia and the Titan Arum. And they're even less predictable in terms of when they may flower. Sadly, I was not lucky enough to see an open bloom in the wild, but a friend on the island of Java kindly let me know when one was about to bloom in his garden. And this, this is it. Amorphophallus gigas. This is the tallest flower of the entire Arum family. Down here from the base, all the way up, this gigantic scape. This flower stands at over three meters tall. But in the wild, plants with flowers over five meters have actually been recorded. Amorphophallus gigas works exactly like the Titan Arum as a chimney, but here, the greater height allows the flower to distribute its scent even more efficiently 
and just like the Titan Arum, I saw plenty of flies attracted to the bloom. Believe it or not, both the Titan Arum and Amorphophallus gigas can be grown at home, although you'll need a very large pot and a very large growing space with warm temperatures and high humidity. But both species can be brought to flower in captivity. Yensi Capitani recently flowered a Titan Arum at his nursery Paradisia in Australia. This is my Amorphophallus titanum. We call him Tiny the Titan. He became famous in December 2016 when he produced a flower bud that grew to 1.8 metres tall and 1.1 metres wide. He became an internet sensation. Every TV station came to view him and thousands of people came through over a three day period. Understandably though, the very biggest flowers in the world might not be suitable for everybody. The Titanarum has a smaller relative that's really fun and easy to grow at home. There's one just over here. This is a Morphophallus cognac, also known as Devil's Tongue, because of this large pointy spadex in the middle, said to resemble the tongue of a devil or a monster. This plant is actually really easy to grow at home. All it needs is a large pot to grow it in, and it needs well-trained substrate, and ideally a, a location where it's not exposed to direct sunlight. It likes a bit of shade. And really surprisingly, it can even be grown outside in the UK. It can survive light frosts and a bit of snow, providing that the corn is deep down enough in the ground not to freeze solid. It's very interesting because it doesn't even need a pot in order to flower. It flowers when the corn is like this. When it flowers, the, the flower will then die then the corn will produce roots, and then it'll produce a single massive leaf for the season. It will take a few years for your plant to get large enough to flower, but it's well worth it.